Okay, in this video, we'll talk about why the row reduced echelon form and why Gauss elimination quote unquote works in revealing the relationship among the columns. So we'll work with this matrix. My students and I call it the dial pad matrix. Now its columns are linearly dependent. Can you see why that is? Maybe you want to pause the video for a moment and try to figure it out before I reveal it. Because you might not be able to see it by just looking at the matrix, and that's a good thing. That's what the that's what Gauss elimination and the row reduced echelon form are for, to reveal the relationship among the columns if you can't see them easily. Okay, so now I'm about to tell what the relationship among the columns is. They make the relationship among the columns is that the middle column is the average of the other two. That's a linear relationship. It's the average, the middle column, by virtue of how these numbers were selected, are the average of the other two. Now, let's perform some row operations, the types of row operations that you use in Gauss elimination on this matrix. For example, let's do something crazy. Let's add three of the second row to the first. So we would get three of the second row to the first. We would get 13, 17, 21, and leave the other two unchanged. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Now what's the relationship among the columns? Is it still true that the middle column is the average of the other two? Let's see. Yes, it is still true. The relationship among the columns was preserved by our row operation. Let's try another row operation. We'll again start, well, we can continue working with this matrix. Uh, one of the other row operations that you might use is switching rows. So let's switch row two and row one, yielding four, five, six, 13, 17, 21, 7, 8, 9. What's the relationship among the columns now? Well, of course, it's still the same. This operation didn't change anything. The middle column is still the average of first and third, because 5 is the average of 4 and 6, 17, you see. I don't have to say. Okay, so the operation of switching rows also preserves the relationship among the columns. What's, what's the other one? What's, what's the remaining one? I think it's multiplying a row by a number. Let's see, let's multiply the last row by 11. Let's do it for this matrix right here. 4, 5, 6, 13, 17, 21, and 77, 88, and 99. I think you know the question I'm about, I'm about to ask, and I think you know the answer. What's the relationship among the columns? Well, it's still true that the middle column is the average of the other two. So we draw the conclusion. The conclusion is that all of the operations of Gaussian eliminations preserve the relationships among the columns. And in the context of a linear system, if you bring the right-hand side or along for the right, then the relationship between the right-hand side and the columns of the matrix is preserved by Gaussian elimination if you do it consistently for the columns and the right-hand side. So the relationship among the columns is preserved, and, and between the right-hand side and the columns is preserved. And of course, our interest to relate is relationship among the columns. When we're solving a linear system, that's what we want to know. We want to know how the right-hand side is expressed by linear combinations of the columns. Uh, that's what solving a linear system means. And the null space, which is part of the general solution, you should always explain to yourself, to yourself why that is the case, is also all about the relationship among the columns. So the big idea is, if you can call it that, 
nobody ever thought this idea was a big idea. Newton apparently came up with this method and called it the ordinary method for solving linear systems. Well, then the idea is, let's perform such Gaussian elimination steps, such row operations, that would make the relationships among the columns easier to see. If they're preserved, if the relationships are preserved by the row operations that we're doing, and let's perform those row operations that reveal the relationship among the columns. And, and how do we do that? Well, by, by putting in a lot of zeros. Relationships among columns become apparent when columns have very few entries that are not zero. So that's why the term elimination comes to mind. Let's start making all the numbers zero. We can do it without any system at all. Just start making more and more numbers zero until the relationship is revealed. But it's better to be systematic about it. So it's better to start in the top left and go down and across and eliminate everything below the pivot and then come back and eliminate everything above the pivot or do it all in one step, which is usually not done by hand, but the computer might do it that way until the relationship among the columns is revealed. So let's try doing it for this matrix. So of course what we're going to do, now we'll do the boring part, but we'll keep highlighting what we just saw. Subtracting four of the first column, excuse me, subtracting four of the first row from the second, I must have done this a hundred times by now, teaching linear algebra. Zero, minus three, minus six, and subtracting seven of the first row from the last row leaves us zero, minus six, minus twelve. So that's our first step. Our second step would be perhaps to subtract twice of row two from row three. And of course that would give us all zeros in the last row. One, two, three. Zero, minus three, minus six, and all zeros. And now, whether or not you were able to guess the relationship among the columns in this matrix, I invite you to forget it and to pretend that you couldn't guess. And then try to catch the moment where you say, oh, now I see the relationship among the columns. It always happens somewhere along this process. And if you're a computer, you would of course not stop anywhere along this process until you've reached the row reduced echelon form. Okay, what's the next step? Perhaps it is to divide the second column by negative three, giving us one, two, three, zero, one, two, zero, zero, zero. Okay, can you tell now that the third column is twice the second minus the first? I think you can, because you're looking at this relationship between these two numbers, and you say, well, we've got to take twice the second column to give us the third, so it's twice the second, that would give us four, then how do you get from four to three? Subtract the first column. So here, perhaps you could not have seen that, that the third column is twice this minus this. Here, can you see it here? <coughs> I think you can kind of see it here, because you look at these numbers and these, and you say, all right, we've got to take twice the second column, and once you say that, it's minus the first, okay? But it became a little bit more apparent here. It became almost obvious here. And by the time you subtract twice the second row from the first row, leaving the matrix in row reduced echelon form, zero minus one, right? If you couldn't see it at all here, it became possible to see it here, a little bit more obvious here, nearly obvious here, here, there is no denying that the relationship among the columns has been revealed. Why? Because we have these columns, we call them the pivot columns, and they're perfect for expressing anything else that may show up past them in terms of, in terms of that. And it's very clear that we need to take 
two, well, let's just go in order. That in order to express the third column, we need one, excuse me, we need negative one of the first column, two of the second column. That would give us the third column. So the null space, the null space is negative one, two, that produces the third column. So subtracting the third column okay, gives us this. This is the null space for a matrix whose middle entry is the average, I should be pointing here, whose middle column is the average of the other two. Now, let me pause the video, erase the board, and show you a little trick for determining the row reduced echelon form for some matrices without doing any Gauss elimination with very little work. Of course, it's not a practical method, and you know what? I'm going to save what I was about to say until after the board is erased and we start again.